got a new tripod and it's smarter than we are. <laughs> No. We'll oh, get it. This is we had to give up and trying to just hey, balance that's it right how now. You tilt it down. So I figured it out. I just need well, an extra we can mess with it later. Alright. So anyway, welcome to Teal House Farm. We're gonna have kinda like a not a game, but you're gonna get on screen? You're gonna chill out there? Uh, we're going to just do 10 random facts tonight. We've had a lot of new subs lately, and uh, we thought it would be fun to just do some random facts that some of you may already know, um, but if you're newer here especially, you may have no idea because you haven't been here for ever. We've been on on the YouTube for eight years almost now, real close Ooh. to eight years, so that's a lot of history to cover. So, um, Eight years and five kids ago. Yeah, we only had... Well, we had just had Annie, yeah. No, so... Have we just had Annie? Annie was just born when you made your first video. Oh, okay. so, so, four all kids right. ago. Tessa is here, and Bill and Celia are here. Welcome. Hello. And Becky is here. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Um, and Lois is here from Ohio. Would you be able to see if my coffee is done? Oh, is that one mine? That one's yours. Oh. I made you a decaf. Because I love you, so... <laughs> all right, so anyway... We're just going to talk about 10 random facts and we'll chat about them and have fun and uh, yeah, just hang out with you guys. So it is a super rainy day today, but we attempted a new project. Uh, I dehydrated some eggs, so that one's coming up. I wanted to try to make my own powdered eggs, so I worked on that today. Um, and I was worried it would have a really bad smell. It doesn't smell like anything. It doesn't smell anything. Do you smell anything? Mm -mm. I don't, so there nope. you go. So if you ever want to try dehydrating eggs, it does not smell. Uh, let's see, J&B is here. Welcome. Okay, so let's get started. These are in no particular order, but 10 random facts that you may or may not know about Teal House Farm. Okay. Number one is a jog your memory question. I thought this would be funny. So oh when boy. we got married... Oh, boy. <laughs> forever is this, ago. Is this, very, is this fair to do this to me on a live stream? Uh, we, got we, we talked about wanting to have a large family because you're from a large family and mm -hmm. you loved having siblings growing up and people to play football with and things like that but do you remember what we decided would be because we would consider a large family like how many kids we said we wanted to have uh, i think we said like four yes we did so we overshot our mark but uh one question i get a lot in the grocery store is uh like like, why do you have so many kids, or did you plan on having kids? And I was, mm -hmm. we did plan on having a large family, but not quite this large. Things got carried away along the way. One of us is just crazy. I think <clears throat> people have asked me that a lot too. They're like, "What? Like seven kids? <laughs> like, what? Like, was that your plan all along? Like, how did that happen? Kind of a thing." Uh, I told them, I usually tell them, and this is my my reason for it, I think. We had, um, when we first got married, we did have a little bit of a problem getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. So, I think after that, like, I mean, obviously, we always feel like children and babies are blessings, but it just felt extra special. Yeah. So, once we got our first one it was like that was really cool and we just kept going from there yep uh becky says i have three but i really wanted a larger family such a blessing to have a large family uh beth is here from illinois and rc joe too is from spokane katie said do you know what causes that your hands are full yeah uh I get stopped. Uh, I've mentioned a few times before. I get stopped a lot in the grocery in the grocery store, and sometimes it doesn't really bo it doesn't bother me if people say something. It does bother me when people stop to ask a lot of questions because, like, I need to do my grocery shopping too. And when you get stopped on every aisle by people asking questions, not just being like, "Oh, wow, that's a lot of kids," you know, and moving on, but people who like ask question questions like mm -hmm. it gets annoying because it really slows the process down and little people only have so much patience for the grocery store so Very i can't true. have the trip taking two hours so i would say most people i i get you have your hands full a lot that's probably most common mm -hmm. i don't know you don't take them all out very often because you you're working but yeah do, what do people do people ever say things to you if you have all no, of them they're just like are all those yours 
Oh, that's probably the main one I get. True Joy is here, and uh, RC says her name is Rebecca. Rebecca. Thanks. Okay, thank you for letting us know. Yeah. And, and Jamie says, what, people stop you? They do. A lot. It is, it is usually people who are not in a hurry, so typically people who are of an older generation who probably aren't in a hurry in the grocery store. And a lot of times it's because they either had a lot of children or they were part of a large family mm -hmm. and they want to share those stories, which I would be more than loving to listen to, just not in the middle of the grocery store because it's a it's kind of a military operation getting everyone through the grocery store. <laughs> it is not a time to sit and chat. So, but I do, I get, I get stopped a lot. So, which is also one of the reasons why I don't go shopping during busy times of the day, because the more people there are, the more I get stopped. So, uh, Jamie says, I'm astonished. Part of that's just the Midwest too. I think people are just could be yeah chattier. And I always find it interesting. I don't, I feel like not that large families, recently historically are that common like in the 80s and 90s when we were growing up but I feel like they're even less common now that's true and so even like in our homeschool co-op like we're kind of the weird ones with a lot of kids like when you were growing up in homeschooled yeah you everybody. felt like everybody had a lot of kids yeah they did but uh for us there's one other family that has more children than we do and they're actually new this year and i was so excited when they came and we met them because i was like yay somebody else who's we're not the weird people with all the kids like somebody else has a big family but uh the homeschool co-op is no longer the row of 15 passenger vans like most of the families only have three maybe four kids and we're kind of the, the odd ducks with all of the kids um so. debbie says hello from oklahoma welcome. and beth says hello from, from wichita. wichita welcome all right number two random fact we are not uh ray seals here, here as well welcome not at all educated in the ways of homestead life we actually both have multiple degrees i have two in music and sam has one a music, in music degree and one in nursing and do you know what you do with music degrees you start a homestead because there's not much practical application anymore i did used to teach music which i did really enjoy i taught piano lessons for a very long time and i taught uh beginning like band and like general music for elementary and, and early middle school which i really enjoyed but mm -hmm. um when we had annie and as her needs started kind of stacking up somebody has had to stay home like somebody had to be there to take her to all the therapies and stuff it just became really Im impractical to try to work so we used to work like opposite schedules where it was kind of like he would work and then i would work and so somebody was always home with the kids but that just became impossible because you were always having to drive her somewhere and that was all day and so you couldn't switch out so i i no longer teach i do substitute teach whatever they need me to substitute teach occasionally at the public school but mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so we have multiple music degrees. Sam has some golden pipes. If you look through our old, old videos, he has some singing videos. But I do. He is a, he's also a classically trained singer. Could have been an opera star, but. I <laughs> don't know about that. Laura plays a beautiful French horn. Well, actually, Laura plays many instruments, but she plays the French horn. The piano. Those are, those are my best. Those are your yeah. two best. Those are my best. Uh, Beth says, I, I would have loved to have a few more children, but we only have one through adoption due to infertility. So, uh, one through adoption. That makes them extra special. Extra special. <clears throat> For sure. Uh, Rebecca says, wow. And Debbie says, if you have family close, you ought to have a co-op. And I, we actually did have a cousin's co-op for a while when our kids were all really young. Um, but we, we live close to family, but far enough away that meeting regularly isn't super practical. And, oh, yeah. and they, mm -hmm. they are not all homeschooled. It's kind of a mishmash of what people mm -hmm. are doing. And also the ages so are kind of all over the place. So we, we've joined a local-ish co-op, which we, which we enjoy. So. Jane B says, hope your talents show up in the kiddos. And Rebecca says, nice. So, yes, I make my kiddos practice their piano every day. They do. And uh, Micah actually has been working on her singing yes. a lot lately. Uh, so that's fun. That is fun. Mm -hmm. All right, number three. What did you want to be when you grew up, when you were little? Random mm -hmm. fact. Um, I guess it depends how little. If I was probably under the age of like 13, I wanted to be a baseball player, mm -hmm. professional baseball player, because I love playing sports. 
I haven't been able to do it much, I'd say probably the last 10 years, but um, before that I was very, very active in sports and I love them. Uh, but I would say once I got into high school, I either wanted to be some kind of a singer, professional singer, or um, work on some kind of a farm. I love horses, even though, and we, I did own a horse growing up, and I've worked a few horse jobs. Um, I would like to learn a lot more about them and have mm -hmm. our own at some point in time. But um, yeah, I think those are the probably the two things I really wanted to do was either sing your professional singer or some type of a farmer, whether it was training horses or, you know, working on like a cattle farm or something like that. I wanted to be for the longest time, I wanted to be an engineer, some sort of like architect or like city engineer where you build bridges. It's probably a good thing I didn't become one. Pretty good at math, but if you've ever see seen our building videos, <laughs> I can't make anything square. So, uh, but that's what I wanted to do you for the longest time. You don't actually have to build that's it That's true, I could design it though. All you have to do though. is plan it, <laughs> and then someone else makes it Should have done it, I could be making some real good money right now, but uh, I wanted to be that for the longest time, up until probably about high school, and then I got more into music, and then decided to study music to be, uh, music teacher which is what I ended up doing so all right number four okay let's talk about the house so we got some newish people around so our house was built in 1897 well the first part of it was mm -hmm. and you said you think it might have been a Sears catalog house we think possibly that it was there are other homes like it in the area and most of them are sears catalog homes uh, and they're like the exact same style and shape like the main part of the mm -hmm. house they're they're almost identical basically and so that's why we think it's a possibly a sears catalog home because it looks just like the other homes that are about this age we know that it, it could, was it could also just be that it was like the same builder the same plans yeah kind of a thing and so they're like you know one guy kind of helped out with all of them Anyway. He was a one-trick pony. Mm -hmm. He built one kind of house. Yep. Um, uh, let's see. Katie says, if we ever come to Arizona, we'll put you to work on oh, running cows. Katie, I would love that. <laughs> and Raiseel says, my dad had two horses, and they were just eye candy. No. Oh. <laughs> Very expensive eye candy. <laughs> and Rebecca says, I grew up on a farm with horses, and I'm also musical. Maybe that's a oh, the yeah. path there to home. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. And there's something <laughs> about the arts that makes you appreciate, I don't know, like fine arts and stuff. I don't feel like it's that much different than nature. Like, you just have appreciation for the beauty that is out oh, and among I you. Oh, I see what you're saying. Does that yeah. make So, yeah, you see a see fair that. amount of artsy people on home I mean, art and home setting, the uh, mm -hmm. Gunder, Gunder, Ms. Gundersons. I can't remember how to say the last name. Yeah, something like that. I think. Yeah. They're, she's a fantastic art artist. Oh, he is, too. I, oh, yeah. That's right. Art, yeah. So, if you look up the channel Art and Home Setting, they have an interesting channel as well. They don't post regularly but they have some cool content and their art is really neat like their art art mm -hmm. um j and b said funny how dreams fall away as our real lives grow well you gotta do something that puts some <laughs> food money, on the table <laughs> put some money in your pocket i feel like f for uh well you wanted to like travel the world and play your french horn for a while yeah that's you not very too. practical and for some of those things uh, you know, to be a to be a professional singer, there are some some ways you can do that. But most of the time, if that's your goal as a musician, you need to be like in the top one percent to be able to make a living and do that. Yeah. Like you need to be excellent. One thing I realized while I was finishing up my master's and I was deciding that maybe I didn't want to be a professional musician anymore was uh, like not to be stereotypical. But you have to be a certain level of just quirky I feel like mm. I, I feel like maybe in the composition world because that's what I was studying I was just not like that like that is all that they think about all of the time the people who are successful like oh. that is 99 percent it's think, about music yeah I think for a lot of musicians, I just wasn't wasn't that's that your jam like wasn't that, that way you're ridiculously passionate about it like that is that is all you live and breathe uh, let's see, Lois says, in our town, we have a number of the Sears catalog yeah. bungalows. Chris says, better late than ever, just joining in. Thanks for coming. And Grandpa Dan is here. Welcome, Grandpa Dan. Thanks for hopping on. And he's closed down all my musical groups. Yes, Grandpa Dan 
is a well-renowned, I'm gonna say this wrong, Grandpa Dan, because it's a hard word, Carolyn Ewer, he plays Carolyn. One of the few grandmasters, I think is that what they call you, Grandpa Dan, part of the guild, guild masters in the world, which is pretty cool. That if you've never cool. heard of Carolyn, you could look it up and it will probably be a video of Grandpa Dan playing it. And he also has led multiple choirs and troops. He's a very gifted musician. And uh, my mom was a musician as well, so it's probably where I got a lot of that passion from mm -hmm. both of them. So, But Grandpa Dan is retiring a lot of his extras. So, um, Okay, but back to the house. One of the things that we found is funny when we bought this house is that it seems like everybody and their brother at some point has lived in this house yes. that, we, that we meet in, mm -hmm. out in the country society. And it's... And it's not usually a, oh, yeah, we lived there, what a... It's always a, oh, we lived in that house. <laughs> like, well, a, like a... It was only... The trouble um, that you're getting yourself there, into. There were a few times in the last, <laughs> like, 50 or 60 years that it was, like, owned and lived in. It was very... Um, yeah. Most of the time, it was owned and rented out for, uh, like, the last... What did you say? Like, 40 years yeah. or so, at least? 40 or 50 years? It was owned and rented out. So most of the people around here are like, oh, I lived there for a couple of years. Like, that's almost every person we talk to, that's their answer. Like, oh, yeah, I rented that out for a couple of years. Um, yeah. Anyway. We actually were able to meet one of the original families, though, or the descendants of the original families that lived here. Because we found some of their stuff hiding in the basement from, like, the 1920s and 30s. And were able to track them down and they were still kind of in the area. So that was kind of a cool experience, mm -hmm. being yeah. able to meet them and, and give them back what was their ancestors' books that they, school books that they had hit. Apparently some, when she was eight or nine, she hid her school books in the basement, hit them real well. <laughs> and then we found them and she had signed them. So we returned them to the family. So that was kind of a cool story. Grandpa Dan says, tired of losing, losing money, your, your inheritance. inheritance. So, See, told you, money doesn't, or uh, music doesn't, doesn't pay. It doesn't usually. pay. <laughs> music is like a horse. It just costs money most of the yeah, time. An expensive hobby. All right. What is your worst or biggest fear? I think you have two. Do you have, do you have to pick from them? Oh, my worst or biggest fear. Um, hmm. I don't like heights. I really hate heights. The but like over the years, I've had to. I say when I was in high school and I had I don't know starting to work some construction, I had to get over it um, a little bit, and so. Um, I've gotten better. It used to just be absolutely paralyzing, and I would never get more than like three or four <laughs> feet off the ground. Uh, but heights, I don't know. What is my greatest fear? Probably uh, not to like bring the stream down, but like something happening to the kids or something. I'd say that's like. Oh, I mean more like light heart. Like, oh, you light hate hearted? snakes. Oh, yeah. Then heights. It's heights. Heights is... Well, you asked yeah. what my biggest fear yeah, is. Yeah, I don't mean them like... Yeah, I mean, okay. I think everybody would say losing a loved one. But I, I mean, care. like, of things that I you have care. to do daily, what makes your knees shake? Yeah, it would heights. be heights. And I would say it used to be snakes, but I'm getting better at that because we see so many snakes around here. I'm still not going to, like, run over and try and grab one mm -hmm. just for the fun of it, but... My favorite story, you, you tell a story when you when you met the black snake that lived in our barn. Yep. He was in the the uh, the top part of the barn, um, which is mostly just used for storage because you can't really walk up there. It's like maybe four feet tall, so you can just like kind of throw some junk from the edges in there. And there was a Rubbermaid container. I was trying to get to something around it, and so I lift up this big Rubbermaid container, and there. And I'm standing, so I climb up on the ladder, mm -hmm. and so the top of the, or the floor of the, like, that top part of the barn is, like, right here. And I pull that Rubbermaid container up, and it's, like, maybe a foot and a half, two feet from me. And there's a six-foot black snake <laughs> coiled right there, like, two feet from my, literally, my face. Shimmied right down that ladder. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't much fun. Uh, mine, mine. He just sat there and stared at me. He didn't do anything, but yeah, I got down off the ladder pretty quick. <laughs> I'm not really scared of heights. I don't like snakes. 
You know what one thing I just like will avoid doing at all costs because it makes me so nervous is like, this is stupid, but like backing into a parking space or parallel parking. Mm. I will drive miles if it means I can pull in forward. <laughs> I just don't. I don't trust myself. Driving <laughs> is not my best skill. <laughs> uh, let's see. Rebecca asks, what instrument do you play? Laura plays like all the band instruments, but like your best French, instruments. Yeah, French horn and piano. And I play piano, and I used to play trombone a little bit, but I would say the keyboard. Ivy now plays a mean ukulele. Mm -hmm. And Mike and Ivy play piano, and I've just started teaching JJ how to play piano. I have to find something for, for Annie Banani. Yep. Something that she'd be able to play. We'll get so. there. Uh, uh, and Sharon says hello from Mississippi. Wet and windy. Yes. Same it's here. wet and windy here too. Yep. Okay. What is one animal you would never... Uh, Katie says one of the trucks I can only back in. I'm scared to pull it into spots. I, just, <laughs> I get nervous when I have to do something like that. And I feel like my brain just shuts off. So I just don't try. Yeah. Yep. I would say sometimes when you get under... Pressure. Under pressure. I don't just, perform well under pressure it when it just, comes to yeah, driving. Yeah, your, your brain just kind of shuts off sometimes. <laughs> uh, let's see. One animal you would never raise on your farm. Uh, I don't get the whole... And this isn't hating on anybody, because if you love it, then, like, go for it. You should do something that makes you happy. But I don't get the whole, like, emu thing. I just... I mean, I guess it's cool to have a bird that big that lays, like, ginormous eggs. Uh, but like an emu or an ostrich, like, I don't know. It just doesn't do much for me. Yeah, mine would be a peacock. I mean, mm. if you really talk me into it, I would, but they're, they're mean. They can be. And aggressive, yep. so. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Once upon a time, we wanted to be off-grid. And if you watch our very early mm -hmm. videos, we did a lot of work to head towards being off-grid. Kind of, yep. And then we decided, as we were heading that way, inching that way, that we hated the idea of being, well, yeah. being I off hated grid. is a strong word, but we decided it was not worth it. Being off-grid stinks. <laughs> <laughs> what did you dislike the most about off-grid? Oh, come on. You can answer this one. This is the air conditioning? <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm, it's, the, I know it's... The best it's... purchase we ever made is right there. Yeah. I know it's not that big of a deal not to have AC... And honestly, it wasn't horrible, except for like the two and a half oh weeks every year when it like it gets to like 103 and then it doesn't really drop below 85. And those like two or three weeks are miserable. They really are no fun. But I would say, uh, which is like it's such a like first world kind of problem having mm -hmm. AC. But, uh, man, on those hot days, we can just come in to your kitchen and cool off for a few minutes before going out back again or outside. Um, that's so nice. But, I mean, we tried we tried a lot of, like, we dipped our toe in a lot of other off-grid things, like I hated... using an off-grid shower system. Yeah. We lived without a, a conventional refrigerator for a couple of years. Yep. Um... I hated, I hated not having easy access to water. Like, it yeah. was hard to do everything yeah. that goes with maintaining a house. Because mm -hmm. you had to drag water everywhere. And then the shower, like, you got, like, a minute of shower pressure from the hand pump shower. And it was not enough to wash my hair, which was super long. So my hair was always getting, like, mats at the base of my neck. I was just like, this is, I'm done with this. Like, I want to be able to turn yep. on the faucet and have a hot shower. And not have to work 20 minutes for a lukewarm shower. So. Right. Debbie asks, how about llamas? Yeah, I oh, don't but know. But they're cute because they bounce. I guess llamas... I'm going to go grab the baby. Okay, I think I would rather have a llama than like an emu or something. But, I mean, there's a few animals out there where you're kind of like, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the point is. Uh, don't some people use llamas as like guard animals? I mean, I would assume like an emu or an ostrich would be a good guard animal too but uh let's see beth says the local dairy farm here had a peacock hanging around for a while she didn't own it just showed up one day and hung around till one day it disappeared yeah i've had friends that had peacocks um and sometimes they can be really hard to keep around 
Um, and their peacocks were really aggressive with all of their other birds, like whether it was whether it was their chickens or their guineas or their ducks or whatever. Um, they were always just going after things. So uh, Becky says, I live in Louisiana. I'll never go without AC. Yeah, I don't blame you there. I can't imagine. It's got to be ridiculous in Louisiana. Rebecca says, I couldn't live without my AC, especially at my age. The rest would be okay. And that's one thing we talked about. Um, going off grid, if it's just if we were just a couple and didn't have any kids or maybe just had one kid, um, I don't feel like growing, going off grid is as hard, mm -hmm. but when you have a lot of kids and especially like once they got to be adults and could actually like do an adult's day's work kind of a thing, yeah. it would be different. A lot of little kids. But when they're little, that's just two or three times the work that the adults would have to do mm -hmm. um, to make off-grid work. So it makes it really hard when you have a big family. The people, the YouTubers you see that actually live off-grid and they've got a big family or whatever, like, that is incredibly hard. That is a ton of work. And I also think there's a difference if you're building from scratch in our oh, off-grid yeah. you can versus put systems in. taking systems away, which is what we were doing. And we're mm -hmm. like, we're spending money to take away conveniences. And after a while, this seems like maybe this isn't worth it. it and the other thing that you don't realize, uh, may, or maybe I didn't realize about off-grid is um, everything, well, not everything, most things with off-grid take longer. You, you actually can save some money, a decent amount of money going off grid. Okay. Shift it. You can uh, you can save a decent amount of money going off grid, but uh, it takes extra time to do that. So I I think um, like depending on how much you value your time, because things uh, you know every little like ten or fifteen minutes here, if it's if it has to do with your activities of daily living, if all of a sudden you're, you've changed four or five of those things, then all of a sudden that's an extra one or two hours you got to come up with in your day, which is tough. Uh, let's see. Uh, Katie says we are off grid, not by choice. I don't even notice that it's strange anymore. That's another thing too. I think if you, um, you get used, used to getting mm -hmm. your pattern and get used to mm -hmm. things. I will say, I think we dabbled enough in it that if, like, something happened and tomorrow it was, like, everyone has to be off-grid, like, we've done it enough that we'd make it and, and uh, like, you know, we'd be okay, which is stupid to think of because that's how everybody lived not too long ago. Um, but, um, anyway, yeah, I think... I always say... It's fun to be prepared for the apocalypse, not fun to live like it's the apocalypse every day. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good saying. Uh, let's see. Debbie says, or alpacas. Yeah, they can be, uh, they're kind of an odd farm animal as well. Uh, Rhonda says, Georgia is so adorable, just like all your kids. I love her hair. All my babies were bald until about two years old. Yeah, uh, Georgia and JJ were probably our two babies with the most hair, I would yeah. say. Um, but Georgia might be the winner. Chris says, here in California, it doesn't pay to go off-grid. Batteries are thousands of dollars and only last about 15 years, so you have to replace yeah, them. Yeah, that's one thing we had talked to about, too. If you're going off-grid but you want to maintain a similar lifestyle, it is not cost-effective to be like solar mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. If you're going off grid and are willing to greatly sacrifice your lifestyle, then it could possibly be cost effective. Well, if you're building from scratch and you want to go off grid, I think you can and live a somewhat, whatever you want to call a normal lifestyle. I think you can kind of make it cost effective if you build in all those systems. Um, but anyway, uh, Prep Fraternity says late, but hope everyone is having a great evening. Thanks for joining us. Chris says, panels will last much longer, but if you like lights at night, the batteries will kill the budget. Katie says, I potty trained my almost four-year-old with an outhouse. Definitely not normal, normal these, these days. days. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> uh, okay, next one. This is number eight. Why are we named Teal House Farm? 
Oh, well, that's, that's just because the color of the house. Yeah. It's Which isn't color. really teal, teal, it's more blue. But it's funny because we get a lot of emails that are kind of spammy. And you can tell which emails are truly spam because it'll also, it'll always start with, Dear Mr. Teal, or whatever. Because oh, yeah. people assume that's the last name because they haven't done. Yeah, yeah. We, we used to get a lot of those questions like, oh, is your, your name Teal it must be Teal or something like that. But it's just because of the color of the... We thought it was kind of catchy, so that's the name we went with. I don't even remember what the other names were we were thinking of. Do you? I feel like it was so long ago. Oh, you were looking for something that was, like, picturesque, like Rolling Hills Acres. I remember having lots of discussions about, like, we need to have, like, a oh, yeah, Hidden like Valley the, Farms, or, you know. Yeah, but we didn't. Our The only thing that's kind of distinguishable, I would say, about our land is uh, we have a lot of black walnut trees mm -hmm. but like black walnut farms kind of like eh, that's not all that i don't know that's just not catchy <laughs> nothing's flat around here farms <laughs> yeah that's true everything is kind of a rolling hill okay number nine random fact mm -hmm. if you've been around here a really long time you'll remember this that sam was the original youtuber it's true so if you watch our videos that are more than like four or five years old mm -hmm all about this little mug right here yeah so but you started the channel what what was your motivation behind starting the channel uh let's see well we had just got the farm and um we before we before we had even moved out here i think we had bought the farm or we're looking to buy the farm, but we hadn't even moved out here, we discovered Justin Rhodes. And at that time, he only had like a thousand subs. We, we discovered him a long, long time ago. But I was watching his videos, uh, and I was like, man, that is really cool what he's doing, and kind of documenting what he's doing. And he had also, uh, fairly early on, was you, you could tell he was kind of trying to build a business off of YouTube. And I thought that all of that was really cool. And on top of that, Laura's family is um, like they don't live close. And so to keep them updated, uh, uploading YouTube videos uh, was a way to kind of let them know what we've got going on in our life since they live far away. And so like all of those things kind of came together. But I was watching him. And I was like, I think I can do that, too. Well, joke's on me because I'm not quite, <laughs> quite as I'm big. not quite as charismatic or business savvy as Justin Rose. Man, our first our first video is pretty rough too and pretty bad. But um, I did work really hard on the YouTube channel uh, there for a while, uh, and then Laura took it over and took it to even greater heights. So Walnut Lane says J and B. That's a great farm name. I like it. Rhonda says, We're not that creative. <laughs> my land is a slope and covered with walnut trees, so she calls it Walnut Oh, Hill. there you That's go. Walnut Hill. See, we should have just asked the people. I know. We should have asked around a little bit more. All right. Number 10. Okay. Is, is your random, this is fun, final funny one, your random ick or something that you, you just can't stand, like, just like in I'll life my... in general or? Yeah. Or having to do with, like, the farm? It could be either. Okay. Like, mine is really random, and you wouldn't think of it, because we homestead, so we're dirty all the time. But I I do not like the feeling of, like, chalk or dry dirt on my hands. I hate that feeling. Mm. It, oh, it makes you my know skin what? crawl. I'll tell you what I don't like. But. Uh, oh, by the Oh, no, we do. Okay. That's different. I was going to ask people to hit the thumbs up, but, because uh, on our it's live stream on the yeah. computer, it says there's only two. But I see up here we have 29, so that's good. Thank you. Um. What I will say is, so our house is old and drafty and our bedroom is, and this is another probably kind of first world problem. Our bedroom is the furthest away from the wood stove. And so in the winter, <laughs> oh, when no. you have, and the bathroom is that far away, but I, I hate like being cold or even worse, having cold feet in winter. I know that's really specific. We have tile, a tile floor here in the kitchen as well. And so uh, if you've ever had a wood stove and that's like your only heat, 
if you've had to leave for like a day or two and then come back and warm up your house again in a drafty old farmhouse, it takes forever. And so I would say that's my ick. It's just in the winter when we can't get the wood stove, uh, I wouldn't say hot enough, but if we haven't been around to keep it going really well. Yeah. Um, having cold feet. Like, even in the summer, like, it, it, I hate it so much that even in the, in the summer, I almost always wear socks <laughs> inside, which doesn't make any sense because it's, you know, obviously it's not cold. But It's like 1750 at our house in the middle of winter because we have, like, these corn bags that we warm up and we put them under <laughs> the sheets in the bed before you go to bed so, like, your bed is pre-warmed because it's cold. But the the kids' rooms are closer to the wood stove, so they yeah, don't struggle. They do a lot it's just better. we have the furthest room away, and it does not do a good job getting out there. If, so if we got the farmhouse insulated, it would do better, and got uh, a little bit of a bigger wood stove, uh, I think it would be fine. But uh, let's see. Uh, Jepco says, "Gall darn made it." Hello there. Thanks for joining us, Jepco, and Angela is here as well. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for dropping by. Those were our ten random facts. Do you have any other random facts that you want to share? Oh, random facts. Hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's anything. I'm trying to think if there's anything that like our YouTube friends might not uh Good night oh. JV thanks for stopping by. Yep, thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh let's see. Rebecca says I use a stand fan that helps to circulate. Yeah, we've used fans and stuff before to help uh Push spread that air. heat yeah. around. Um uh, I'm trying to think is there stuff that uh, like our YouTube friends might not know um might not know about us that they might think is interesting. I don't know. Why the mustache? Um, because... Let's see. Well, I think it's... Uh, so when I was just, just a homesteader, and I was mostly um, just working at the church, um, I just I had a big, bushy beard. But once I decided to... Uh, go look at some other jobs and such. I had, uh, one of my next jobs I had was at a farm, but it's a history farm. And so we had to do, every day, we had to do, uh, like, presentations. Um, and I felt like when I went and applied for that job, and then afterwards, because I, like, was presenting myself and doing these presentations, that it was nice to, like, keep a little bit of a neater appearance. And I know you can have a beard and be really neat. Um, so I went with just the mustache and now I keep the mustache because the rest of my beard is like gray and white. <laughs> if I grew it out, you'd think I was like 70 years old. Little if I grew out. Yeah. Everyone would call me Papa if I grew out my, my beard. So I just keep the mustache and it's starting to get some white in it too. So it's probably only a matter of time. Uh, Oh, uh, Rebecca asked, how many kids in your families growing up? So, uh, I'm, I'm just had two. It was me and my sister, so it's not a big family. Laura's the youngest of two, and then I'm the oldest of seven. So, nice biblical numbers. So. Yep, I'm the, I'm, uh, 16 years older than my youngest sister. Uh, Beth is asking, do you plan on more babies after Georgia? I think Georgia might be it for us. We had Pat, and Laura convinced me that Pat needed a buddy. And so Pat did get a buddy, but it's another sister. We were, I mean, we love our girls, but we were kind of hoping that he might get another brother, brother to wrestle with and stuff. Uh, and it's kind of funny, because Patton and Isla... They do wrestle each other a lot. They're, they roughhouse, those two do. Uh, it's kind of funny. And Patton a lot of times gets the upper hand on Isla. Um, we got to watch him a little bit. But I think Georgia might be it for us. Yeah. I always um, said I didn't want to have babies in my 40s. And that's closer than I'd like to admit. Yeah, so I think we're just we're ready to enjoy having our kids 
mm-hmm. letting them grow up. And there's things that you we want to do. Like, one of the reasons we homeschool is because we want to be able to, like, let our kids go places and experience things and travel a little bit. And that's mm-hmm. really hard to do with babies. If everyone's a little bit older, that becomes a little bit easier. Jepco says, I use Simpler on my grays. It works great, not a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the tip. My, I'm going to have to start... Um, Decorating my mustache with it uh, keeps some of the whites out. <clears throat> Every time we watch, like we were watching a show the other day that was set during the Civil War, and he can't, he can't watch somebody walk in without with a mustache without being like, that is a nice looking mustache. Oh look, yeah. Look at those. Uh, what, do you, what do you call them? Chops. Look at those chops yeah, on him. We need, we need chops. Mutton like chops and stuff. Yeah, I, it's it's fun to see pictures or um, of like the the mid 1800s or see shows set in that time frame. Oh, sorry. Whoop. Tried to rotate it. Uh, because everyone has incredible facial hair. Yeah, great facial hair. Lots of big beards and bushy mustaches. <laughs> Just munching on that puggy. Not a care in the world now. He's been, she's been a diva today. So. She was kind of a diva yesterday too. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I broke my glasses, if you follow us on Instagram, you saw that. And my new glasses still haven't come in, so I'm, like, squinting at everything. I do have contacts, but I only have, like, two pairs left, so I'm saving them for when I have to dry, because then you really have to wear glasses, right? So Mm -hmm. not wearing them right now. (laughs) So any other fun facts? Mm, No, I don't think so. I think that's it. That's all I got. That's all you got? That was fun, though. It was fun. That was kind Kinda of a different, a little bit different. Uh, stream. I quit coloring my beard. I now look like Santa. Sometimes you just have to accept it. That's true. And let it go. That's very true. I think I'm almost 40. And I think once I hit 40, I'll probably just be like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, but I'm still holding on to Your what youth. little bits of my youth. I had to accept having no hair by the time I was like... I know some people it's a lot earlier, but it, for me it was like 24 or so, 25, and I've yeah, pretty Sam, much either shaved or... If you see Sam, pictures of Sam as a little kid, he had curly blonde, curly cues. Mm-hmm. No, that's what we got. Yep. That's, that's what's left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ray Seal says, what happened to building the new house idea? We're still, t- we're still talking about it. Whether or not we're going to build on our property or fix this house up. Mm-hmm. Or kind of a combination a of combination. the combination. Uh, yeah, the hardest decision... Uh, um, right now, the biggest factor is just the cost of materials. Doing anything right now is almost impossible. I mean, material prices are starting to come down. But mm-hmm. when COVID happened, it just put a hard stop on everything. Because you know, what we had imagined it would cost to work work on the house just I mean it like quadrupled and the same goes for building a new house so we just the decision was to make no decision until prices came down so I think within the next couple of years we'll have we'll have made a final decision to be working towards it because we're definitely right. running out of room as it is now and the house needs some substantial work that can't be put off for too long it's very true um the biggest the biggest trying to move somewhere else yeah. is like out of the question because homes are so expensive. expensive and we would like to get something and we like where we are i mean um and, and like the property has probably everything we really want as far like it would be i feel like it'd be hard to move because i kind of like our property where it is and that like there aren't a bunch of neighbors around us and it's mm-hmm. got a nice view when you step out your front porch you know like stuff like that would be hard to match it moving right. that would be really picky um, but, but yeah. Yeah, we would want something that's a little bit bigger. I'm trying to find something that's a little bit bigger. It's like, those prices are astronomical right now. So, so. if I had to, de- okay, here's the question. If you had to decide today, like today somebody was like, you can, don't worry about the cost. Whatever it costs, you can do it. Would you rather build a new house on the property or fix the old one up? Hmm. Uh, I probably fix the old one up because you could make it what you need. Mm-hmm. Make it. I mean, I'd fix what was here, but also make make an addition, right? Uh, so that we could have a little bit more space. We need more um, 
nice storage space. Mm -hmm. That would be really helpful. And we need a space where the kids can be loud when they can't go outside. That's probably the, like a basement or a room where they can just bounce off the walls. <laughs> Yes. So. Oh, yeah. Laura said, so a lot of the kids are in, uh, like, gymnastics now and stuff. And uh, Laura's like, if we actually had a usable basement, she's like, I'd just pad everything down there. They can go down Because they try and do flips off of everything in the house right now. I mean, everything is a trampoline or something that they can use to do some sort of a cartwheel, somersault, whatever. Uh, so they're all over the place, but Laura's like, if we could, I'd just pad everything up so <laughs> yeah. they could do whatever they wanted. Uh, Rebecca asks, how many acres? We have 10 acres here. Um, and so that's a good, um, that's like a solid number. You can do a lot with, I feel like you can do a lot with 10 acres. So that's not too bad. Uh, let's see. Bren says, hopefully when Biden's gone, things will improve. We can only pray. And Chris says, amen. So. I think, and things always ebb and flow, and we don't feel, I'm thankful that we don't feel pressured to have to make a choice, because, like, we had friends that were building a house when COVID happened, and then they had to finish it, because you have to live somewhere, and prices, like, mortgage rates went way up, and, mm -hmm. like, the cost, it cost, like, a huge amount more than they were planning to from when they started, because of how, so I'm thankful that we don't feel backed into a corner, and so we can just wait things out. Yeah, we're just kind of keeping the status quo for right now. Um, and doing, doing a little uh, improving. Yeah, here and there, just here a little bit. We got some projects coming up, just, you know. Since we, we still, haven't- We still do have to live here for a while, mm -hmm. whatever we do. So it'd be nice to have some things fixed up to work so, a little better. Yeah, and since we haven't decided like exactly what we want to do, we're trying not to throw a ton of money into this farmhouse, mm -hmm. but make real smart decisions. You know, like a can of paint can go a long way yeah. like obviously it's not gonna fix a roof or a foundation or something like that but little things like that can help get you by uh let's see uh rebecca says that's a good size for the farm and Raseel says did you yeah, ever dig, dig out, out the, the root, root cellar? cellar no but um what i would like to do we have a friend that owns an equipment rental company and at some point in time um we like to get out here with like a mini excavator mm -hmm. thought about doing it by hand but we didn't uh, we didn't want to start digging a hole and not be able to finish was the biggest concern because yeah you got like little kids through. you got animals and so we want to make sure that we if we're going to dig it out that we're ready to finish it and we need larger equipment so our friend has offered to help us yeah. Or hook us so up. some so, at some point in time i think we will get like a mini excavator out mm -hmm. here and um do some investigating yeah. we so. didn't we started we were looking at it but he was still in school with like no time and then well you just started your new job so what it's funny because you i know you still get comments because laura had made some short videos yeah. and stuff about it um and we were kind of ambitious because i had at that point <laughs> when she made the first video I was in a break for school and I had like a week off and we're like, oh yeah, this is fun. Let's do this. And then we got like two, two days into break. And I was like, I only have two more days off. It was like, <laughs> I'm not going to finish this break. I don't think this is going to happen. <laughs> so it, it got quickly put on the back burner. Yep. Uh, Debbie says improving is better than nothing. Yeah. Rebecca says root cellar would be great. It would mm. be, I really need more storage for food. And a, so a root cellar would really help with that. Uh, Chris says, plus, if you dig it out, you'll have to either use it or refill, refill it. it. Yeah, yeah, we one just want to make sure we're ready to finish it um, so we don't just have a big gaping hole on the side of the hill for yep. somebody, something or somebody to fall Yeah, because if you dig it out, it's it will need repairs and yeah. things like that. And so that's more money you'd have to throw into it. So we were like, ah, <laughs> maybe just having two more days off. This isn't the best timing for this. Uh, so yeah, it really got put on the back burner, but, but I think at some stay point. Stay tuned. We have a lot of projects coming up because now that he's kind of settled in with work and he has a job where he has days off during the week, time to work on things. We've got a bunch of things lined up. We've already knocked out a bunch of things. We're working on it. We well, there's stuff in the kitchen. There's a lot of things that are like 75% done. Yeah. We need to put the finishing touch on them, but we'll get there. So coming, coming soon. So all coming together. To a vlog near you. So. Yeah.
All right. Are we All good? right. I'm ready for bed. I know it's only eight o'clock. But I'm man. tired. I worked. I worked a twelve-hour shift Saturday night into Sunday, and then uh, I worked this morning as well. Yeah. And I, my, <laughs> I haven't been able to like flip my schedule back, so I am whoop. He almost didn't make the live stream because. He was holding the baby at like 10 minutes to the live stream and I came in here to set it up and then I said, all right, it's ready. And nobody came. He had fallen, he had fallen asleep and I was like five minutes. I was like, I had to go wake him up. <laughs> like, hey. Rebecca says, progress and Michelle is here from, from Louisiana. Louisiana. Welcome. So. All right. I think we're going to shut it down, but I hope all of you have a safe and happy week. Thanks for joining us. You, we really uh, appreciate keep it. Keep checking. Check the, uh, you have to check the Facebook the next few weeks i'm starting my part-time job where i score tests and so mondays will be kind of hit or miss whether or not i have to log into work or not or can do a live stream so we'll we'll be letting you know but the next six weeks or so will be kind of hit or miss whether or not we're available to be streaming on a monday night so but we'll, we'll keep you all updated all right thanks for watching everybody have a good night yep have a good night